Here it is. The news about the coronavirus. That's right. The news about the coronavirus. I'm hoping that a year from now we don't have one of those stories that a student became very sick or worse. And the same for a staff member. Greenland Junior Senior High School American Studies teacher and union representative Heather Stanbaugh said some of her colleagues are on edge as the pressure to reopen mounts. Looking at the numbers now, I have quite a few staff members who are living in fear. Um, and then to be asked to come back at what looks like 100 percent with masks and, and some social distancing, it, it adds extra anxiety. So Working on Google Classroom and Classroom <laughs> Maps, Samuel says personally she's also concerned about how she'll build relationships with students. That's in addition to how she'll make the necessary transitions with curriculum if they start school one way and then have to switch midstream because of the rise in COVID-19 cases. I'll have like this really great moment of inspiration. I'll be very excited. And then the reality of, well, we don't know how long we're going to be face-to-face hits. -face and so it's like, well, I can't really channel my energy to that. And then you get sad. And those concerns are just the beginning, as she and other teachers like Jane Glossenheiser oh. wonder how they'll engage with students effectively in a classroom six feet away. As both teachers prepare for the rollout of an official restart plan, they're looking to legislators to make the right decisions so that districts across the state don't come up short when schools start. We need to make sure that there's enough financial resources and support for our school districts moving forward. For now, they take it one day at a time, hoping they come out with a win. For Spectrum News, I'm Tanisha Johnson. Columbus-based Improv Edge is one of the many businesses that have had to reroute due to COVID-19. CEO and founder Karen Huff says the group had to quickly restructure a business that has always operated in person. Improv Edge is a business training company that uses improvisation skills in its workshops. And the in-person sessions range from half a day to nine months, but have now switched to 90-minute digital workshops. The company is in the top 1% of female-owned businesses in the United States and has won more than 10 awards over the years. Huff says it's their key principles that have guided them through the pandemic. Our deepest value is that we have to be flexible and adaptable and be willing to improvise, and the pandemic was probably our greatest challenge to prove whether or not we can do that. I'll tell you, in two days, 95% of our clients either postponed or canceled their business with us in the space of two days. And we sat down virtually <laughs> and started talking about what we could do. The company is also now helping clients navigate the digital space, a service they hadn't offered before the pandemic. At least one major Ohio city will resume shutting off customers' water tomorrow. It comes as the state's EPA director sent a letter to mayors across the state giving them the green light to resume that practice. The director originally ordered shutoffs to be discontinued in March because of the pandemic. The state police department says the city will resume shutoffs tomorrow, but both Cleveland and Cincinnati say they will not shut off water for delinquent payments at this point. Columbus's mayor, police chief, and several community leaders are noting a spike in violence across the capital city. Chief Thomas Quinlan says there have been 67 homicides to date across Columbus and 469 felony assaults. That's a 125% increase from last year. There were eight shootings over the weekend with three people killed on Saturday. Also, Quinlan says four police officers were violently assaulted over the weekend. Mayor Andrew Gither says illegal guns are a threat to the people. He's calling on legislators at the state and federal level to take action. Columbus's community leaders work to create opportunities for young urban men and women. The mayor of Toledo is now asking the Ohio Attorney General's office to begin the process of suspending four Toledo council members accused of bribery and extortion. Mayor Wade Kapsikavich had set a Sunday deadline for council members Larry Sykes, Gary Johnson, Yvonne Harper, and Tyrone Riley to resign, but none of them did. All of them were arrested by FBI agents on June 30th. A federal complaint indicates more than $34,000 was at stake in the deals between the council members, the business owners, and a Toledo attorney. As a Parma City school district to the growing list of organizations considering changing their name, 
Carmel High School's nickname is the Red Men. The district says it will host a series of Zoom meetings starting tonight and continuing over the next six weeks to let the community weigh in on whether it should be changed. The district superintendent says it's likely not feasible for any name change to take effect for the upcoming school year. Now that some emergency measures put in place to deal with the coronavirus pandemic are starting to expire, eviction cases are surging again across Ohio. A 90-day moratorium had been placed on eviction hearings across the state, but that has expired as of June 1st. Numbers suggest landlords continue to file eviction cases, and an estimated 503,000 Ohioans could not pay their rent in June. The U.S. Census Bureau says an additional 660,000 people were not sure if they would make their July rent. Governor DeWine last Thursday announced a $15 million grant to support homelessness prevention and to help people secure housing. This year's federal and state income taxes are due this week. You do have until this Wednesday to file your taxes to the IRS. It was, of course, postponed due to the pandemic. If you're filing, you might want to do so online. There's a huge backlog of paper tax returns because so many IRS employees have been working from home. That means taxpayers who already filed a paper return may be waiting a while for any refunds. Taxpayers can also request an extension to October 15th, but you'll still need to submit an extension form by Wednesday. When most people think of the Midwest, they think of a laid-back attitude, especially compared to the hustle and bustle of both coasts. But a new study shows Ohio may be among the stressed states in the country. Wallet Hub released its list of most stressed out cities, and not only are four in Ohio among the top 20, but Cleveland came in at number one. Cincinnati, Toledo, and Akron are also on the list. The study looks at more than 42 factors, ranging from how vulnerable a state is to COVID-19, to average weekly work hours, along with divorce and suicide rates. Columbus is the next Ohio city on the list, ranked 75th. Hey there and good afternoon, Northeast Ohio. I'm meteorologist Ashley Beatty. Thank you so much for checking in with us for your updated weather on the one forecast here on Spectrum News 1. It's an absolutely gorgeous afternoon across Northeast Ohio, seeing plenty of blue sky and, yes, pleasant temperatures in the mix as well. Highs for most of us remaining in the 70s and into this evening. Those numbers will be coming down very nicely. Now notice here a stray spot shower could still develop, but the vast majority of us will stay dry and any rain we do see is going to be very limited in terms of our coverage and intensity. So for many of us, even if you do see rain, it's not going to be much more than a couple of sprinkles. Now pretty quickly, especially along and south of I-80, numbers will be coming down through tonight. Away from that Lake Erie influence, we're not seeing those moderated temperatures. And as we clear out, we see those readings falling pretty rapidly through the 60s. Now overnight tonight, some of us could potentially be waking up to readings in the 50s, at least away from Lake Erie. For this evening, though, remaining in the 70s, it's not until around 11 o'clock we see 60s coming back to Cleveland itself. But from there, dropping off very nicely, and we do have a really comfortable forecast for you by tomorrow morning. Again, we'll generally lower 60s right along the lake shore, and then notice how we drop by another 3 to 5 degrees as we get away from Lake Erie, coming down to 59 for Akron Canton, and look for an overnight low of 57 degrees for Medina. So a nice, crisp, cool start to your day tomorrow, but from there, temperatures will be pretty rapidly climbing. We're going to see a lot of sunshine in your Tuesday forecast. So remember, starting off near 60, already by 9 o'clock, we're nearing mid-70s. That's where we'll be for your lunch hour. And from there, we'll see those temperatures continue to climb a bit through the afternoon, working their way into the lower 80s for many of us tomorrow. And some of us will be flirting with mid-80s in the forecast as well. Akron Canton, 84 for your high tomorrow. 85 is where we're headed for Mansfield. And even right along the lakeshore, temperatures will be cooler, but I'm still forecasting 80s across the board. So 80 tomorrow for men are as well as Ashtabula for your highs. From there, we're going to see a big spike in our temperatures coming our way on Wednesday, jumping by about 10 degrees to a high of 91. Notice there's a little bit of a dip in here Wednesday or Thursday, Friday, but that's only because we're reintroducing chances for showers and thunderstorms late in the afternoon, early into the evening, so that won't allow our readings to warm up quite as much. However, 90s are back for that weekend forecast. More details on your Saturday, Sunday coming up in less than 10 minutes. Did you know that customers who use a spectrum?
mobile calculator, eBay could be saving money every month, even hundreds of dollars a year. The calculator will show you in three easy steps which plans fit your family needs and how much you could save by switching to Spectrum Mobile. Whether it's 5 gig, unlimited, or a combination of both, you'll only pay for the data you need. Try the Spectrum Mobile calculator today by going to spectrummobile.com slash save. between our country's leading health expert and President Donald Trump is generating attention. A new White House memo is attempting to discredit Dr. Anthony Fauci based on statements he made at the beginning of the pandemic. The statement claims, quote, several White House officials are concerned about the number of times Dr. Fauci has been wrong on things, and quote, followed by a list of Dr. Fauci's previous comments. President Trump even said in an interview that Dr. Fauci is a nice man, but he's made a lot of mistakes. But despite disagreements with President Trump, Press Secretary Kayleigh McEnany promises they're still on good terms. In terms of the president and his record on coronavirus, um, he stands by the actions and the steps he's taken in this historic response. You have Dr. Fauci, uh, who said that the record of this president is impressive. I can't imagine that under any circumstance that anybody could be doing more. Dr. Fauci says he hasn't briefed President Trump in two months. China is imposing sanctions on several U.S. politicians, including Senators Marco Rubio and Ted Cruz. China has not released any details about the sanctions, but says it's a response to, quote, wrong actions by the United States. Last week, the U.S. imposed sanctions on a number of Chinese politicians for human rights violations against Muslims. Both Rubio and Cruz have been highly critical of China. An alternative approach for justice. Power Group right here in Ohio is honoring the life of Elijah McClain through music. The first Ashley is in the Weather Center. Isolated chances for rain today, but we'll bump up our rain chances significantly by Thursday. I'll let you know if those showers still linger into the weekend. Coming up in your next letter on the one. At Spectrum News 1, our goal is refreshingly simple. To bring you an accurate, reliable, and local forecast every 10 minutes. Weather on the one, every 10 minutes. On Spectrum. America, we want to help get you back to it. But here's how with the Ford Promise. Visit your Ford dealer, finance a new, certified, pre owned, or used vehicle through Ford Credit, and if you lose your job, you can return it for up to one year from the day you buy it. You can also get 0% APR financing for 72 months across the Ford line. Here it is. The news about the coronavirus. That's right. The news about the coronavirus. Information 
or by video phone at one eight three three six eight two seven six three zero. Or visit the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention at cdc.gov. Persons with disabilities can find accessibility options for spectrum products at spectrum.net slash ph slash accessibility. Here it is, Mike Colmar. The news about the coronavirus the important issues. That's the right. decision makers together. The news about the coronavirus discussion and debate. Your community, your state, your show. Be focused with Mike Colmar Sunday morning at 10:30 on Spectrum News One, exclusively on Spectrum. Maybe I'll run for president. Maybe I'll Here call it is. tell you. The news about the coronavirus to become the Michigan of old. That's right. We'll call it the first professional. The news about the coronavirus. I'm the biggest ice cream shipper in the nation, setting the standard for American ice cream. I get to live my dream. I mean, what did I ask for? Conversation, Sunday and Tuesday night at 9 on Spectrum News 1, exclusively on Spectrum.
for so many of us is a really powerful thing. This vigil is not only important to the artists who perform, but to the supporters as well. I was in a war that day. I had a grandchild that lived in that city, and there's no reason why Elijah had to be treated the way he was. With her sign in hand, Neil Wellye showed her support to a young man who she says didn't deserve to die. It's no crime to be a nerd, you know. It's no crime just to be an innocent person. And um, when I learned that there's going to be a vigil here tonight, I was determined to come. Through this visual, Rail Yang says she hopes to see real change happen for those who die from police brutality. I'm hoping that justice is taught, that the officers were either resigned or been fired. No, they need to be prosecuted and convicted. But the most of all needs to be changed in the way officers interact with the public. This vigil was one of more than a dozen others to take place across the country to honor McLean's life. For Spectrum News, Cameron Nelson. Tackling wealth disparities, we take a look at the trends which have plagued African Americans for generations and how experts are trying to tighten the gap. But first, we continue to hear from activists, leaders, and community members about what brought them to action and how addressing racial discrimination is so important to create a better world for everyone. Here's today's Voices for Change. I believe that Cleveland is unique in the fact that we do have a very large number of uh, up-and-coming black leaders, but we don't necessarily do the best job of plugging them into the opportunities that they need to get to the next level, to uh, take over the helm, if you will, of uh, political, business, uh, civic, and community leadership opportunities. I've learned in my travels as an African-American male, not everyone wants to walk in my shoes, and uh, rather they, they want to point fingers or make assumptions. And of course, assumptions about black men is uh, one of the biggest problems that we're having in America right now. Uh, it's why there's always this quick transition to violence and aggression when uh, uh, men of color are stopped for a routine traffic stop. So we, we just have to change the way we think about black men and the way we communicate to black people and people of color in general. And if we can do that, I really believe we'll be much, much further uh, down the road in a much better country. You start to understand things like what Jim Crow meant and how Jim Crow laws kept my grandparents from being their uh, full selves and reaching their full capability. How redlining, uh, to a great extent, limited the opportunities of where my family could live and, and work and do business, open a business, uh, etc. How limited education opportunities in urban core settings because of disinvestment or underinvestment affects the uh, impact of uh, one's ability to not just graduate from high school, but successfully matriculate at uh, an institution of higher learning. If companies are serious about addressing what's happened in America, I think they really need to begin to establish report cards, some type of accountability to be able to look back a year from now to say, we were here when we made that or offered that statement, and a year later we can certainly point to progress because X number of individuals have been promoted, X number of individuals have been hired, X number of individuals have uh, been invested in in one way or another. It can't just be words, it has to be actions and deeds.
reach your community. In focus with Mike Kallmeyer, a half-hour show dedicated to the important issues. Driven to bring decision makers together and committed to elevating discussion and debate. Your community, your state, your show. In focus with Mike Kallmeyer, Sunday morning at 10.30 on Spectrum News 1. Exclusively on Spectrum. Maybe I'll run for president, maybe I won't, but I will tell you that I'm not going to go away. I don't think Michigan can become the Michigan of old. We're probably the first professional sports team in the world that is built for the fans. We're the biggest icing shipper in the nation, setting the standard for an American nation. I get to live my dreams. I mean, what, what did I ask for? Conversation, Sunday and Tuesday night at 9 on Spectrum News 1, exclusively on Spectrum.